thanks for watching and today we will derive the celebrated d'Alembert's formula which gives us the solution of the wave equation with initial conditions. And so now let's consider the wave equation utt equals c squared ux x and now let's impose an initial position so u of x zero is phi of x and an initial velocity utx0 is psi of x. So this is kind of new, but also given. Sometimes called the initial data. And the way to visualize this is, well, at t equals zero, we have what's called the initial profile of the wave. Just the way the wave looks initially. Maybe like this, v of x. And I also tell you how it moves. At every point, I tell you at which speed it moves up and down. And that is what this psi of x is. Now, the good news is we've already done the hard work because we've already found a general solution of this. So the rest is just a matter of plugging in our initial conditions, just like for ODEs. So step one. So what we know is that u of xt is f of x minus ct plus g of x plus ct. So we have derived this using the factory method and the coordinate method. And remember, it essentially says that any wave splits up into two, one moving to the right at speed c and one moving to the left at speed c. So, in order to use the initial position, all you have to do is now plug in t equals zero. So ux zero is f of x minus c times zero. So f of x minus zero plus g of x plus zero. And that already gives us the first equation that we need, which is f of x plus g of x equals so u x zero, which is p of x. Very, very good. And now to use the second equation, all we need to do is differentiate this with respect to t and then set t equals zero. So once again, remember our general solution. So u of x t is f of x minus c t plus g of x plus c t and as I promised, we first need to differentiate this with respect to t. So u t x t is f of x minus c t with respect to t, and then g of x plus c t with respect to t. And well, because the inside here depends on t, we need to use the chain rule. So use the chain rule. And in particular, we first differentiate the outside, which is f prime of x minus ct, and then we differentiate the inside, which gives us a minus c, and same thing for g, so g prime of x plus ct, and then times c. Now, you may wonder, what is this prime? So here, f is a function of one variable, which is x minus ct, and we differentiate f with respect to that variable. So note, really what we mean by f prime, f prime is df over ds, where s is x minus ct. So given x and t, this gives us one variable that we call s and f prime is a derivative with respect to that variable. Same thing with g prime. g prime is a derivative of g, let's say, with respect to w, where w is x plus c. But now all we need to do is plug in t equals zero. You will see it won't really matter here. So u t x zero now becomes minus c f prime of x minus zero 
plus c g prime of x plus zero and which ultimately gives us minus c f prime of x plus c g prime of x equals psi of x. And so to recap what we have so far, we have minus c f prime of x plus c g prime of x equals psi of x, which if you want, we can rewrite as f prime of x minus g prime of x is minus 1 over c psi of x. Now, compare this with our previous formula, which was f of x plus g of x equals phi of x. It's sort of the same, except the main difference is that this formula involves derivatives, versus this one does not. So, to get rid of derivatives, we just integrate. And so, f prime minus g prime is minus 1 over c psi, which tells you f plus g is not integral of 1 minus 1 over c psi of x dx, which, if you want, we can rewrite in terms of the antiderivative, so that's the same thing as 1 minus c big psi of x plus some constant, let's call it a, where what is big psi of x? That's just an antiderivative. Derivative of psi. And a is just an integration constant we won't use c because we already have little c here. So, step three, we have two equations because we have f of x plus g of x equals phi of x. And I believe we have f of x minus g of x is minus 1 over c psi of x plus a constant. And now to solve for f and g, we just add and subtract. So if you add, you get 2f of x plus g minus g, which is 0, equals phi of x, and then minus 1 over c, big psi of x plus a. So that gives us f of x. So it's 1 half phi of x minus 1 over 2c big psi of x plus a over 2. And then to solve for g, we just subtract. So f minus f, that's 0. g minus minus g is 2g. 2g or not 2g? That is the gesture. Oh. So, and then we get phi of x minus minus, so plus 1 over c, big psi of x, and then minus, I believe, a over minus a, and so g of x is 1 half phi of x plus 1 over 2c psi of x minus a over. And the last thing we need to do is just plug in f and g in our formula for you. So once again, that is f and g. So the final step is to use uxt is f of x minus ct plus g of x plus ct. And so this just becomes one half phi of x minus ct, and then minus 1 over 2c psi of x minus ct plus a over 2, and then plus 1 half phi of x plus ct, and then plus 1 over 2c big psi of x plus ct, 
and then minus a over t. So you already noticed something amazing going on. The pesky constants of integration actually cancel out. So we get bang, bang. The most satisfying moment. And then we can factor out some things. So that is one half phi of x minus ct plus phi of x plus ct and then plus 1 over 2c psi of x plus ct so big psi minus big psi of x minus ct but the cool thing is we can simplify this even further using the fundamental theorem of calculus because what does the FTC say? It just says that the integral from a to b of f of x dx is the difference of antiderivatives, capital F of b minus capital F of a. But the cool thing is you can also read this Persian style or Arabic style from right to left because this also says that the difference of antiderivatives is just an integral of the derivative. And notice this is precisely what we have here. We have a difference of antiderivatives, so we can write this as an integral. So in the end, we do get the following formula. So u is 1 half phi of x minus ct plus phi of x plus ct and then plus 1 over 2c and now the integral. So the endpoints are x minus ct and x plus ct. So x minus ct and x plus ct of the derivative of capital psi, which is little psi. And then technically we want to write psi of x dx, but we already have x here. So let's just use another variable. Let's say s dx, just a dummy variable. And what we obtain, lo and behold, in the end, is the celebrated d'Alembert's formula. So there we have it. The form celebrated d'Alembert's formula, which again, gives us the solution of the wave equation with initial conditions. So initial position phi and initial velocity psi. And in the next video, I'll show you some cool demos of this and we'll interpret this in terms of our initial data. All right, I hope you like this. If you wanna see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.